All right, so I'm going to count down to three, and then I'll let you know when we're halfway and when you're down to 10 seconds. Okay, we can do this. All right, so three, <laughs> two, one, go. All right. Oh, oh no, wait, no, I'm throwing in white. Oh, wait. Oh, no. <laughs> Should we restart? Yes. Should we give it a restart? All right. It wouldn't let me change. <laughs> all right good evening and welcome to pixels after dark you may be wondering why the less handsome male of the host trio is doing the introduction and that is because joe's unfortunately battling mother nature right now um, he's in the snow apocalypse so he won't be joining us tonight but we do have the lovely ruby still hi and then me forgive me with uh no video but i'm here i promise and we also have a very special guest tonight, Rachel Bradley. Hi, hey! Rachel. How's it going? So, Rachel, why don't you uh, start by just telling us a little about yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm an independent artist, um, which loosely translates to me kind of painting for my own projects. I take on some freelance work. Uh, I also write and make resources for artists. So my, my job is fairly scattered and diverse, um, but it's great fun. Um, I'm from the UK. Uh, I was born and raised in, in the UK and I've been living in America for a couple of years now. Um, yeah, that's kind of a broad overview of me. <laughs> so whereabouts from the UK are you from? Because my dad is also English. Oh, really? I was, yeah. So I was born in Wales um, but only I spent um, like two years, first two years of my life in uh, in Wales, and then moved to uh, Essex, which is <laughs> it's not my favourite place in England. <laughs> um, I don't know how broad the reputation, how like how known it is overseas. Um, in England, it's uh, <laughs> not everyone's favourite place. <laughs> but uh, I have some very fond memories of Essex. But uh, I spent my adult life in London, and uh, yeah, now I'm in Virginia. Oh. Very hey, cool. cool. And where was your dad from? He's actually originally from South End. And then, <gasps> no way! That's so close to where I grew up. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. And then um, his family moved to Colchester, Aww. and that's where they're kind of at now. So, so. Essex as well. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So. I love South End. Is like some of my best childhood memories because it's like the coastal, and it's just so sweet and cutesy. Uh, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, so good times, good times. It's funny because uh, my dad's from England, so half my family is over there. And then my wife's family is half Guatemalan, so half her family's in Guatemala. So Amazing. I'm like, family vacations are fun because we yeah. get to go explore the world, you know. That's varied. I love it. That's yeah. amazing. Do you get um, much excuse to travel? When we can. It's a, uh, it's quite a trip to get back over there, but it is fun when sure. we do, because it, it's one of those like if you're gonna make the trip, you take off quite a bit of time, so it's not like a three day vacation. It's like three week vacation, so it's kind of great. For sure, that's awesome. Yeah, how do you like Virginia? Yeah, I love it. Are you by um, the coast or the mountains? By the mountains. Um, so we're at um, Charlottesville. So we're kind of um, oh. near, near Shenandoah and Skyline Drive and stuff. Um, and I honestly absolutely fell in love with it. I've never been uh, the kind of person to fall in love with the place. I've always, I mean, I up and left London like it was nothing. I was like, yeah, sure, <laughs> just move around the world. <laughs> um, but the first time I came to uh, Virginia, I just really felt at home. Um, I think I'm used to suburban England, so everything's kind of flat and grey and kind of built quite close together and everything's kind of small. Um, and then I moved here and it's just like the landscape is just, it just keeps going and it's just blue and green and I just fell in love with it completely. Um, so yeah, I adore it here. The Charlottesville's a lovely little town. It's very artsy and liberal and um, it's well-educated. There's a university here, so everyone's kind of forward-thinking and creative and it's really cool. I love it here. Mountain town? Uh, sorry, is it a mountain town? Like, no, in the it's kind of um, 
it's not in the valley it's kind of on the uh oh gosh east west eastern side um so you can see the mountains from where we are but we're not up in the mountains gotcha. it's about a kind of like a 40 minute drive up into the top of like skyline drive and stuff so one of my favorite places i've ever visited was a small town it was in the mountains in virginia mm. if i could buy a vacation house somewhere it would probably be a little house there the Aww. cabins are so cute yeah there was this house that i stayed at and if you enter you'll see the first and the second floor there's like a loft that's the second floor but if you keep going straight into the second floor that becomes the first floor because you're on the mountain oh my gosh yeah, <laughs> yeah it was really <laughs> trippy i little in texture was fun oh just before i left there was this mitten hanging on the outside of the welcoming door, the entrance, and there were these little tiny baby birds just born hatchlings right as we were leaving. Oh. <laughs> Those are perfect. <laughs> One of my favorite places. What kind of fairy tale is this? <laughs> oh, it, it was a fairy tale. Uh, That's amazing. I wish I, I could remember the name of the town, but I do not. It, I was told it was a college town and that it was just known for that. Very small. Interesting. All, yeah, all I can hint is that there was an outdoor movie theater. There was a hot spring bathhouse or a spring bathhouse. I mean, that had been hot, but one of those. Uh, yeah. Hot spring. This is one of those. <laughs> And there were caves you could visit. And inside the walls were all just made up of like clay and you could feel it. And that was Would cool. it have been Lure? I don't know. No. Uh, I'll look it up later, see if it looks similar. It was close to that big giant natural bridge. That- oh man, this is where my education is just uh, I'm like <laughs> Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I don't know what it's called either. I have a lot of looking up to do. <laughs> I feel like a lot of Virginia is like that. It's just cute mountainous places yeah. and wildlife, and at least that's my my rose tinted view of it. But <laughs> I would not be mad if I had to move there. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be mad. No. That sounds perfect. I love the mountains. So yeah, me too. Any place right I can well, hang out in the mountains. Are your mountains, Tyler? Are your mountains desert mountains or are they like green mountains? I don't um, know. What do they call them? Is it a rock? Arid. Arid? Mountains. Arid. Yeah, so it's not quite desert and it's not quite green either. Like they have pine trees, um, but like the ground floor of the forest is very dry. So it's like we have a forest, we have trees, but it's not like lush. Not grassy. Yeah, or- exactly. Um Further north you go in California, it is, but mm-hmm. where I'm at, it's just, it's desert that leads into mountains. And it's weird because there's like a perfect tree line. So it actually throws people off when they're looking at it because it almost seems like man made because it's so perfect. Aww. But it's not, that's just where the trees start growing. Oh. It doesn't sound too different from Vegas mountains. Like we do have the rocky dry mountains but we've also got a lot of piney mountains like mount charleston for example and then yeah, right next to it red rock yeah super similar to mount charleston actually okay That's kind of where i live i could picture that yeah we all so i go down the mountain to desert and then i go up the mountain to mountain bike and it's perfect. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. i really do love how varied america is in terms of its landscape um I thought I'd seen mountains when I lived in England and then I moved to America and the hills here are mountains yeah. I'm used to. I'm like, whoa. That's so funny. My dad said the exact same thing. Yeah. He was, he was like, well, that's why he chose to stay in California because he was blown away that you could hit like mountains in the morning and then the ocean in the afternoon. Yeah. And then I've like this. drive and hit the desert in the evening. There's so many climates in one state. So cool. Quite inspiring, really. I love nature and just taking that in. Hey, um, chat is asking if you have a favorite piece of artwork that you have created. Oh, gosh. Um, So this year has been completely wild to me in terms of exploring, uh, trying to figure out what my style is. 
Um, and honestly, my favorite piece of art is probably a little bit underwhelming. Um, so it's actually a study I did of myself right before I went traveling. I really rushed it out. It was like a, um, it took about probably about six hours. Um, it was a study of uh, me and my elfies. Um, but I really uh, focused on the line work in it. And uh, maybe if I can, is there a way for me to find a link for this or something? Um, uh, if you have uh, it somewhere online, you can pull it up and you can actually share your screen. Ah, oh, let's mm-hmm. do that then. Um, so let me find my website. Um, so it's really simple. Um, there's nothing too impressive about it, but it was just a, a eureka moment for me. Um, it's not profound, um, but it was just a really successful kind of exploration for me. Let's see if I can figure out how to share my screen. Um, Let's see. How was it done? At the bottom, you'll see a bar that has like the menu icons. Share is in the middle. You select it and then you can select the screen that you want to share. Let's do this. Yeah. There we go. So this one. Nice. That's my favorite too. Oh, yay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So it feels kind of... um, I, I guess a bit guilty that I'm not choosing one that has like an epic environment to it or it's like profound storytelling or anything like this. No, that's um, but something yeah. about finding the line work and the getting the the line weight right and the colors right and just picking out the details with the line, it was just such a triumph for me. Um, there's usually a phase in most paintings where I want to pull my own hair out. But uh, this one, it was just a joy from start to finish. And uh, it's been a, kind of a compass for me in moving forward. So uh, even though I'm working on more advanced, complicated things now, more like um, spending more time on things, I still use this as kind of my my compass to know what it is I'm trying to achieve. Yeah, I mean, you can't, despite that you see it as more simple than the stuff that you, that you're working on now, is there's story here. Like her gesture is intriguing. You're like, oh, she's thinking about something. She's looking at something. You're intrigued. Just. You want to know what's her perspective? Yeah, thank you. Thought. I think my favorite thing about this one is seeing the line work with the rendering. I think a lot of times it comes across like comic booky, but this is something entirely different for me. Like, I almost feel like you created a new art style with this. Oh, I can't tell you how much so I love you for saying that. <laughs> yeah, it's that's what's so intriguing to me about it. Is like. Is it a painting? Is it line? Like my brain doesn't know how to process it, and it loves it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that makes me so happy. Yeah, like, a, cover, a cover art, you know. That's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, there's so much about this piece. This was one of the pieces that I shared in our little Discord server that we talked to each other about before guests, and I'm like, this is the piece that like blew my mind because i was watching you progress to it i think that's the other thing to it is you could see in your previous paintings before this one like you kind of leaning into this Mm. and then all of a sudden you did this one and it was like like you said it just seemed like that eureka moment where it's the perfect blend of everything i've just been i've been fighting this kind of um this output for a long time. If you look back through my my portfolio up until this point, um, you can see that each time I do a painting, I just put a little bit more line into it. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's been for a long time, like a dirty secret of mine. Um, you know, I've, I'm married to a very successful painter. He is entirely shapes and he loves uh, gestural brushwork. And I've always been in love with his painting. Um, and my love of line felt like a dirty secret that I had to try and squash because <laughs> it was like, I don't know where I got this silly idea from, but I believed that line was a crutch and that, you know, it's just a sketch for to be painted on top of. It's not mm-hmm. supposed to be showing through at the end. Um, and I kind of tried to hide it for a long time. And every time I painted, I just got a little bit more out of it. And uh, my husband was saying, like, why don't you try doing more lines? And I'm like, I, you know, maybe. <laughs> and it honestly took about two years. Uh, let's go go onto my uh, gallery here. And you can just see it kind of a, coming out more and more. Um, so in my older work, um, this one doesn't have much line work in it. But then if you were to zoom into it, let's see if we can get any closer. Just like you see me just starting to sneak the slight subtle lines and things it's so yeah. subtle but it's like there and like around here I know I was sneaking lines into the rocks and making myself feel really happy and it was kind of scandalous but I was loving it <laughs> so it's just been a slow progression from this kind of um softer more painterly look into 
like where we are now, which is much more like line heavy and just having fun with that. Definitely. So, yeah, it's been a fun year. <laughs> yeah. You, the, like I said, I almost feel like you've created a unique style that no one else has really pursued yeah. yet. And that's what I love <laughs> about it. It's, it's like fully, if you took your line work away, that would still be a beautiful illustrated painting. The lighting's great. The colors are great. All the blending's really beautiful. So it would still hold its shape, but something about having the lines in there just makes it, it gives it a whole new feel. Like, Thanks so much. I feel like the, the lines allow me to kind of express the confidence that I can't get with the painting alone. Um, I found that with painting, there's certainly a lot of painters who are phenomenal with their edge work, um, but it never really came naturally to me. Um, and I found that I, kind of lean too much on soft edges and kind of that implied detail. Um, and it can just leave things looking a bit mushy and non-committal. Um, and finding a way to work with lines has meant that I have to be really confident that what I'm drawing is correct. Yeah. And that, you know, I'm trying to pick out the details that are important while kind of downplaying the ones that aren't. Um, and it's really helped me develop a confidence in my work and stop relying so much on just kind of hiding things and hoping people don't notice things and implying things. And I've had a lot of fun with it. It's funny, it's like the concept artist nightmare. They're like, no, we like hiding things. <laughs> I know. <laughs> See, I don't think I'd be a very good uh, concept artist because I'm really bad at implying detail. I just, I'm like, I'm just going to do this quick thing. And then five hours later, it's like, Rachel, <laughs> put down the pen. <laughs> I'm so happy oh, noodling. <laughs> well, to kind of get us back into uh, the show here, um, we did have a question. You said you kind of, do a, a little bit of writing art. Um, you also do resources for artists. So has art always been a focus of yours or did you just start pursuing it a little more recently? Definitely more recently. I'm all over the place. I'm so scattered. Um, so I went to university and I studied biomedical science. Um, and I, I thought I was going to maybe be a doctor. Uh, then I thought maybe a researcher. Um, then I studied biomedical science and realized I was slowly just becoming depressed and that I really desperately needed to be in a creative field. Um, I then kind of pushed my work away from medicine and towards 3D printing because I was like, well, that's more creative. Um, so I did biomedical 3D printing first um, mm -hmm. and then went on to architectural 3D printing. Um, and that's about the time I met my husband who was just like, what are you doing? <laughs> just, <laughs> if you want to paint, paint. Um, and that was when I started to make the push towards being uh, like a full-time artist. Um, so yeah, no, my path has been all over the place. I've always wanted to be an artist, um, but I'm one of those classic tales of people wanting me to prioritize what would make me successful. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone agreed that I was a good at art and that I enjoyed art. But they were like, but you're also good at maths and science and you should you should do maths and science. And, um, right. You know, you can do art as a hobby. And uh, I fully believed I could until I started doing it. And I realized I just had no creative energy left at all. Um, so, yeah, for sure. Art's a, a new thing for me. It was only probably about three years ago that I first kind of considered studying art. So not just drawing, but actually trying to get better. Mm -hmm. um, and then probably I'd say for like the last year, it was about... It's just under a year ago that I got my green card and I could officially start working in the States. Um, so, yeah, that was about my timeline. Very cool. That's really interesting. Um, we have a, a friend who's also an artist and she started off doing architectural like blueprint drafts. Ah, there you go. And she is now an exceptional artist with line work. So it's kind of interesting that you kind of went down the same path and you got the line work thing going. For sure. Um, that's very interesting to me. I don't know if it's like a blend of left and right side of the brain kind of battling it out on. I was going to say, left. I feel like there might, this is a very over, oversimplified concept, but I think that artists tend to exist somewhere between um, being a, I'd say like a painter who thinks in painting, like in, sorry, in shapes, um, mm -hmm. So when they see an object, they see the shape, like the overall and how they could fill that shape. Uh, mm -hmm. And there are people who see edges. Uh, so like looking around the edge of things and seeing kind of the contours in things. Um, and that's a very, 
I'm sure there are people who exist somewhere in between all over the place. Uh, but I feel like it's kind of painters versus draftsmen. <laughs> um, <laughs> some people will kind of go straight for blocking in the silhouette and wanting to get the whole shape in. And some people will just want to kind of start chiseling the edge work away. And um, I'm definitely the latter. <laughs> right. That's a very interesting perspective. I never really thought about it that way, but you're right. A lot of artists I can think of do kind of fall into one of those two categories. Um, there's some people that absolutely excel at like vector art, um, mm. which is a lot of edges. <laughs> For sure. And then others, like you said, where they can take a blob and turn it into something. And you're like, I didn't, I didn't see that, but I'm yeah. glad you did. <laughs> it's like so abstract. <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of nice because it means that um, these are all tools that everybody can use. So just because you think really well in line doesn't mean you can't be a great painter. Um, right. But it's nice to know what that natural tendency is. Uh, I fought my love of detail for a long time. Um, I tried to squash my temptation to just noodle on things. Um, and I developed this idea that detail was bad and that I should be a painter and not a draftsman. Um, and it took years of learning that there's nothing wrong with detail you just have to learn how to apply it correctly um absolutely and learning that being a draftsman is completely fine and there's plenty of things i can do really well with that um and you know i can still paint <laughs> doesn't mean I, I can never paint again um it just is it's just a different skill set that i'm prioritizing right that's actually great advice for any young artist coming up is to not not fight what you kind of lean towards naturally sometimes. I think some people um, tend to see what other people are doing and they want to just push that because that's what they develop in their heads as what art is. Um, but I think, like you said, it's, it's important to listen to your own intuition, so to speak, and pursue what makes you happy when it comes to art. I like to think of it as um, if you're trying to climb up someone else's ladder the best thing you can do is kind of get up behind them um the best thing you can kind of do is try to find what your own ladder is and get ahead um if you're trying to imitate other people um or trying to be a, another version of other people then you're only ever going to get kind of as far as they got um and it's definitely scary choosing your own path of things and quite often it you have no idea that you're actually doing that until it happens and then you kind of get to look all proud afterwards and be like i figured it out um but finding your own way of things and trying not to fight your nature is quite important. It's much easier to get good at something that you enjoy and are kind of naturally more inclined towards than trying to fight the nature and get good at other things. Um, doesn't mean you can't, but it's, <laughs> it's easy. It's nice to have some things to lean on. Right. Absolutely. So uh, with uh, kind of keying into your draftsman abilities, what medium do you prefer? Do you prefer doing digital because it allows you to, kind of deal with the lines over and over again or do you still do traditional stuff i do both um it really depends on what it is i'm trying to achieve um so i really love um i really love the texture of traditional work um part of my love of line is that i love things to look perfect um but i also don't love how perfect things look um i really love other people's textured grungy artwork and then i look at my immaculately rendered work and i'm like it looks so dead um <laughs> So traditional work lets me kind of sneak a little bit of texture in there using the same techniques I would digitally, but, um, you know, the, the paper lends itself, the medium is kind of imperfect and it produces a really nice organic look. Um, but I really do love that working digitally, I can tweak my drawings. Um, I am not the kind of person who bashes out a perfect drawing first time. Um, I really do have to sketch and refine. Um, so it's really nice working digitally for that sort of thing. Uh, I right. think you can do both. I don't think you have to pick one. I'm going to cheat the question. <laughs> uh, no, I 100% agree. I actually think it's important for people to do both because you actually learn something from each. Um, I know for me, I'm far better at oil painting than I'm digitally painting. Um, and that was like my dirty secret when I started sharing <laughs> my art. I was like, here's all my digital stuff. And then people are like, you should really share your oil stuff. And I'm like, oh, you guys like that. <laughs> Seriously, oils are like revered these days. Yeah, so it was, it was kind of kind of weird. But what I've noticed is stuff I've learned digitally now translates really well onto oil paints and vice versa. Um, some techniques I was like, oh, there's no way you can do that on the computer like I can do with oils. It turns out you actually can. You just got to know the program a little bit. So that's been fun to explore both. Right. That's awesome. I love how transferable it is. It's nice that... 
when you step away from one medium, it doesn't just dry up. You can kind of return to it and bring more to it. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Someone um, was asking uh, what it is you paint. I'm looking what at your, I paint. I'm looking at your gallery right now, and it looks like the majority is character art, very fantasy themed, gorgeous. But you've also done landscapes. Like you've got several just environmental pieces, which are just as fabulous. Oh my Thank goodness! Thank you so much. Oh my goodness! Like the, <laughs> the one with the ocean, <laughs> with the glistening water. Holy! Oh, that was a triumph. That was the first full environment I think I really did. Um, that is rich. I've been building up to it, and I was like, I am going to commit to this. I'm going to paint an environment, um, and it was actually I was really pleased with the outcome. Um, but yeah, I'd say that I'm mostly I paint characters. Uh, I really love telling stories with um, my art. So the whole writing and everything like that. So naturally I want to draw the characters I'm writing about and things like that. I want to depict scenes in my story. Um, so that's kind of the primary thing I like doing. Uh, but I also have a real love of just drawing things like foliage. I love tiny repetitive details over and over and trying yeah. to build that pattern up on like a big scale. Um, and so, actually, can I share with you what I'm working on at the moment, which kind of, yeah. it's, a, it's a work in progress. Um, yeah, but I'm working on a, a line art heavy landscape. So it's kind of relevant to what I'm talking about in a sec. I'm like trying to describe it. And I'm like, I've got it right here. Um, if I just load it up and you'll give me a moment. And then I need to remember how to share my screen and it's all going to work perfectly. <laughs> See, this is the kind of stuff that I love for people that tune into the live streams because audio wise, you don't get a cool sneak peek into Rachel's upcoming stuff. Yeah, no one else is going to see this. <laughs> so you can see here, this is like um, a very heavy work in progress. I've got my value sketch on underneath, which is a right mess, but it means a lot to me. Um, <laughs> Ruby's like geeking out. <laughs> She's like, yes. And I'm having so much fun trying to get this line art underneath. So let me try and disable that. There we go. So that's how I've got with the line art so far. So you can see I'm just like spending hours just like in there drawing these leaves all over the damn place. <laughs> um, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So just kind of these building up these repetitive elements and making them look cohesive together without overpowering one another. Uh, that's what I'm currently trying to figure out. So yeah. So the uh, Rachel Bradley coloring book will be available. <laughs> I mean, I'm saving these line arts to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It's that just like boring. the dream of anybody who loves drawing, basically. It's like, can other people color my stuff? Do you guys like that? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Are you using any references or are you just kind of winging it? Um, so far, actually winging it much more than I normally do. Um, I am, I mean, I've got my reference project. I absolutely like absolutely advocate that everyone should be using way more reference than we do um but in this case i've actually for i find that environments are more especially when you're working on like an imaginative environment it's more about the pattern design i think mm -hmm. something like this where it's like lots of leaves it's more about making the shapes work together and kind of clustering information and placing things in the right place so they don't compete too much um and trying to get a perfect reference of this scene is just um it's just not been easy. Uh, so we've mostly been like, say for this, uh, this palm tree on the right hand side here. Um, I kind of looked at reference of palm trees um, and I was like, okay, so they have this like shaggy looking trunk and then they have these kind of chopped off bits that sit underneath and then they have the trees, the, uh, the branches that come out with a singular leaf on them. Mm. Um, and I kind of stared at those for a while and I was looking at the overall uh, shapes of things so the way these uh these leaves curl backwards towards the viewer and stuff like that um and then once I understood the kind of I guess the science of it the um how it physically is working in space I just kind of worked imaginatively from there uh -huh. um and actually working in line is kind of nice for that because uh, it means I'm only dealing with one thing at a time um if I was trying to get the values right and the colors right and the edges looking great and all of this right at the same time um i would probably not be able to do this from imagination very well at all but in terms of drawing i'm simply dealing with getting like a good perspective and kind of good proportions and that's all i really need to get right in this first pass um so this is mostly from imagination, this one. I definitely will be using reference for the figures because I'm not going to be able to figure that out on my own. 
Um, but yeah, the rest of it's mostly just uh, from imagination. You can uh, definitely is... see the bias in foliage, the detail work you've put specifically in certain elements. Like, And I can see where you're headed with the foreground too. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> this is good. It's, uh, it's why I did the value sketch underneath. Normally I wouldn't do that. It's actually the first time I've ever uh, worked that way. Um, yeah. But I realized that when, I, when I'm doing line, it's easy to forget the overall composition and kind of the important grouping of things. Uh, and you can get a bit kind of cluttered and lose sight of the, the overall intention of the picture. So I did the value sketch underneath to, to keep me on track, to remind me of what it is I'm trying to achieve. And So what is it you lay down first? Is, so, it the, is, it, is it that grayscale sketch that you lay down first? Yep, so I'm going to disable this and show you that underneath. So this is so messy. Um, this is like airing my dirty underwear. But um, so this is this was the guiding kind of sketch for it. So I just established, um, it started basically with the, uh, the horizon line, um, the idea of this water here, and then I bashed in some darks around the outside to be like, oh, here's the rocks, and just kind of picked detail out from there um, and kind of refined it as I went. Are you also yeah, I actually love how loose the value sketch is. Yeah. yeah. I was nice. gonna say, are you also laying down the lighting foundation as well, or does that change up as you go? Yeah, so I'm trying to keep as coherent a value sketch as possible. Uh, so like I was saying, it's kind of easy to lose your way when you're working in line because there's so much detail and you have to you can't <laughs> you can't just gesture in like a whole tree kind of thing you have to if you're going to draw a tree you have to draw a tree you have to get in there and draw the bark and each individual frond and stuff like that mm. um so this is kind of to um to keep me grounded and i find that uh if i don't have values i can't see proportions as well i think that's just my brain uh, is broken well, that, that makes sense. <laughs> you're building up your shapes with the values so you're you're creating the blobs that define the composition for each object and making right. them together like that you know like if and you I find sorry, oh no, I'm sorry. Like if you were to stand back and blur your vision, you, those blobs like they look good together, you know. Like Thank you. you. Even if it's blurred, I try to as long as I can keep that skeleton in there, it should somewhat come together. So I have to ask you: Do you utilize the the zoom out method? Do you make it like a super small thumbnail when you're doing your value sketches, or do you keep it the same size? I worked about maybe about this level or maybe about there is probably about where I was working. Um, so I, I would occasionally tap out to about there and just make sure if I squint down that it's right. Right. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I can see roughly what I mean from about that scale. So. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, um, I love the lighting, especially once you've moved on to the next layers and you've kind of knocked down the tone. Um, yeah, oh so that's actually <laughs> when you turn on line art. Oh my goodness! I, I wish <laughs> detail. <laughs> I wish, like, for the podcast, we could almost like flash <laughs> GIF images or something like that. Oh, just like cycle through. <laughs> yeah, because oh. th- it's perfect as you're describing it to see it happen. You know what I mean? Going from the dark values to the you know the washed out tone to then you're yeah. doing the line work and finding the shapes. Exactly. I mean, the, the washed out tone is more for um, for readability while I'm drawing. Um, right. It's kind of so that I can see, because obviously trying to do black lines over um, something like this, suddenly I can't see the lines anymore. Right. Um, so this is more for, uh, for readability. But I'm thinking um, I'm going to be quite, I'm quite experimental with the colors. I'm not sure where I'm going with them yet. So this is more just a, a guiding kind of thing than it's uh, literal. But yeah. It's going to end up like Avatar with all the psychedelic color. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get so trippy. <laughs> the water is pink. <laughs> I don't remember the mushrooms in there. <laughs> that is awesome. You've got another chat question. Oh, uh, yeah? Chief Chris is asking if this is all electronically based or any of this done by hand? This was all uh, digital. Um, so... Sometimes I bounce back and forth, but this one was just entirely digital. It's kind of not in my comfort zone. Um, I'm not an environment painter. I would not identify as an environment painter. Um, so just working digitally allows me to make changes on the fly and stuff like that. So, yeah. It's actually a perfect segue into um, tools, techniques that you use for this. Um, oh, yeah. So what programs do you use to start something like this? 
I see Photoshop. Uh, yeah, so most of my painting happens in Photoshop. Um, I do also have an iPad, which I've been using more lately. Um, what are you using on iPad? Procreate, <laughs> of course. Um, so I don't, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute. Uh, there we go. Um, so I really like the iPad for doing initial drawings. Um, it's just really easy. I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it. I am the anti-Apple fangirl. I'm one of those stubborn people who's like, I won't own anything Apple. And then I picked that up and I was like, I really like it. Um, ignore my iPhone there. Sorry. <laughs> I'm one of those people. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I swallowed my words and I'm like, that's a wonderful product. I love my iPad. Um, so I do a lot of my initial drawing on the iPad. Um, but I will do, I think pretty much all painting work happens in Photoshop. And then, so obviously with Photoshop, you use a tablet then. So what kind of tablet are you working with? My baby. <laughs> this is oh my... my. <laughs> Wait, is that, is that Cintiq? It is, yes. Uh, it's actually really That's... new. Um, I got it like a, probably about two months ago. Um, oh, it's huge. And it's an overindulgence, quite honestly. I don't, uh, I don't know that anyone needs one of these. <laughs> um, this was a dream of mine from... Um, I don't know, I think I was 14 when I first declared that I wanted one of these. And it really is a dream to work on. I absolutely love it. Um, so, yeah, this is... <laughs> that looks like an experience. It is. It's very immersive. <laughs> I was about to say, I think what's great about that is that really gives you that traditional vibe while working digitally. Ah. I mean, nice yeah. big screen. Yeah, I mean, you just kind of get to work with. up in there. You're like, you can gesture the canvas round and stuff and... Uh, it's actually really, like you say, it's a nice kind of traditional feel. Because um, I do like working traditionally. And uh, one of my big qualms with a lot of digital work is that um, it feels very distant from you, separate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to be in there and doing things to it. Um, so it's really nice to have a, a tablet that emulates that. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't get on with screen tablets. Um, it seems to be a very divisive topic and whether some people like to have the, like, uh, like the Intuos, uh, some mm -hmm. people like the Cintiq. I'm definitely a Cintiq kind of girl. I have been for about uh, four years now, I think. I've had a, I had a smaller little one. Um, and yeah, I love them. They're wonderful. <laughs> I think maybe if I had a really big one, I could dig it. But otherwise, I don't know why I just really prefer the Intuos. Yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. But I used to have one. I love iPad. I, I love painting on iPad. Oh, and you got one more question, actually. Uh, looking at your gallery, Chris says... Um, everything seems like light and good, not evil mean. Have you ever done anything with a darker theme to it? <gasps> that is a good This was actually a question later, but Ooh. let's answer it now because mm. this is juicy. I need to think now. I'm going to have a look because I'm like, I don't think I have. <laughs> I think I'm just like all sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What's that? Sorry? If you haven't done anything dark, would you consider that? Would yeah, you... for sure. It's mostly, um, you know what? I don't know why. I've never considered this. I'm now like, oh, you're right. I <laughs> don't paint evil things. Um, I think I I started painting a sad thing once, but then I didn't finish it. So uh, that's about as far as we got there. Um, uh, no, no, I'm not seeing anything really evil. <laughs> um no, I don't do evil stuff, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you were, what kind of evil theme would you be interested in? Mm, that's a good question. That's a really good question. Um, I'm really interested in... Um, this is kind of what my novel focuses on. I'm really interested in uh, the kind of grey kind of evil in the way that um, I find it really interesting that uh, some people can hail someone as being like a, a protagonist and a hero, while another group of people thinks that they're evil. Yeah. Um, and that is kind of a universal thing that we all have our perspective on what makes someone good and evil. And it can be completely different from someone else's concept of what good and evil is. Um, I have no idea how I would translate that into a painting per se. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm definitely interested in more that like unintentional evil. So that would probably be the kind of theme. I'm not really one for like, um, you know, evil queens, barely clad and spiky crowns and holding skulls. That's not really the kind of evil that I'm interested in. But um accidental yeah. evil. Yeah, like unknowing. <laughs> Maybe like someone oblivious to their own evil. That's kind of something oh. that I'm interested in. 
Oh, that is interesting. If you that reminds do... me of... Um... Sorry, Ruby, go ahead. No, I'm just saying, I, I'm just curious to see if you do come up with something. Sorry. It just kind of reminds me of, um, like, Hancock, the movie, where he's a superhero, but everyone hates him because he's always destroying the city. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's kind of what it reminds me of, like, that that accidental evil. It's, I mean, it's entirely and wholly spawned from places like Twitter these days where you can see really good people hating on each other. Yeah. And quite a lot of the time, they're almost somewhat agreeing, but it's more just the way that things are said or like um, something specific about something just really angers somebody. And just that divisiveness of seeing good people furious at one another. And I'm like, what? <laughs> that is the Star Wars fandom right now with the Mandalorian. Oh, oh, I haven't seen this. No spoilers. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it. I'm just saying, if you look on Twitter, there's been this raging debate over what style of film The Mandalorian is or what genre. Is it a Western? Is it a uh, like Japanese samurai-based? Um, I forget what you call it in Japanese. But there's a certain film style that's based off of that. And people keep going back and forth. And... Um, one of the writers I follow, John Goff, was like, it can be both. <laughs> he was just like, this is a suggestion. <laughs> but it is interesting how people kind of do get worked up over the subtle details. Yeah, that's stressful. <laughs> um, so you touch base on Photoshop and Cintiq. Um, are there any other tools that you use when you're doing your digital art or any of your artwork? Uh, digitally, I think that's everything I would use. Um, traditionally, I, I mostly work in kind of um, pencils. I really love color pencils um, and also a bit of watercolor and acrylic. So I like those kind of transparent media. Uh, I like layering up things as I'm painting and working kind of light to dark, basically getting darker and darker as I go. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of the main things that I work with. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, one of our last guests, uh, paint a size. Uh, she starts dark and then she adds light. Ah. Her themes are also pretty dark. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I need to meet her. <laughs> but Collaboration. You know, I need it. What other, uh, um, Similarities I'm saying is your love for foliage and one of our last guests loves plants. Uh, you lose uh, that. Yes. Maybe you might uh, get them yeah. That's He's awesome. also super into line work. Nice. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I derailed. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, though, um, as far as tools, I know you somewhat recently released a whole um like resource pack for references yeah so, i'm curious do you use your own references all the, all the time, time. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, this, <laughs> I mean this is why it came about is because um i mean uh my husband did uh free landscape packs um and they were really helpful for people and he had he had the means to host it so, he, you know, he already had, he had a Gumroad store. Um, so it was already established as like a way to sell things. Mm -hmm. um, we had the cameras that we were using to take pictures of things. Um, and we, every time we did a painting, we would get the two of us to like pose and take photos of it. And we'd use ourselves for reference because it's, um, it's easier and higher quality than trying to find something off of Google. And, um, and like just one day I was like, why aren't we doing what you do with landscapes with figures? Like with, there's two of us, we've got good cameras. <laughs> you know why aren't we doing this and uh, basically we we bought a cloak and we we tried we were like we'll just see if we can break even on the cost of the cloak and we'll do a we'll do a reference pack and, and it was just wildly successful nice and yeah we know we absolutely use our own reference all the time <laughs> what i love how you emphasize we bought a cloak she didn't mention the swords and all the other props which Clearly means they already had them. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be fair, they came after. So the cloak oh. was the, the initial purchase that started it all. That was the, the slippery slope down. Um, gotcha. 
Well, like if we can pay off the cloaks, and maybe this is justified. And it, it, it was justified. So, so swords, <laughs> elf ears, you know, it's all kicking off. Yeah, um, for those listening, the reference pack, what I found to be the greatest asset of the reference pack is the poses that they're in are not poses that are easily found in Google. Like, they cover every position you could think of as far as characters um, from laying down, sitting, standing, action poses. It's all over the place. So I definitely urge people to check that out. Thanks so much. So you can go to uh, reference.pictures. That's the URL, reference.pictures. And uh, we've got all sorts of packs for free and um, some that are paid but affordable. And you get hundreds of pictures each pack. And uh, We've had so much fun with them. I can't wait to do another shoot. I've got a couple planned. Oh, very cool. I'm looking forward to that. Thanks. Well, Ruby, you want to bring us into time management, everyone's favorite subject? Is that the first one I always bring up? Yeah, it is, I think, yeah. Hey, so <laughs> how do you manage your time? <laughs> um, so I'm quite erratic and fickle. I'm extroverted. Um, my, I'm like... I like thinking laterally. I'm always like off having ideas and it's really hard to just sit my butt down and do the damn time. Um, so I have to um, track my time. Uh, so I use a toggle timer um, oh. and I set myself minimum hours. Um, so at the moment, I, it's going to sound really low, but let me start. Okay. So I have to do three hours of painting a day. Um, and that is stopping if I check my phone, stopping the timer if I go to the toilet, um, so it's three hours of pure painting. Um, and it's actually really, really hard to do. Um, just the time spent, even if like I'm having a conversation, I'll stop and have the conversation come back. Um, and something about focusing my, like, putting my focus on the input and not the output. So on the physical hours I'm putting in and not on the product that's coming out of that. Uh, it really helps me kind of get things done. Um, so having that kind of the accountability of reaching a minimum number of hours spent. Um, and then also, um, I'm trying to be pretty good about, uh, journaling, uh, and writing to-do lists. So keeping everything written down and making sure that I'm not bouncing around too much. Mm. Um, so between those two, that's tends to be how I manage my time. So do you do art full time then? Cause you yeah. said three hours a day, which in a week that starts adding up. It does. Uh, I mean, art as a job is a lot of stuff beside the painting. Right. Um, so I'm, like, it sounds so low when you say that, like three hours of painting a day. It's like, well, what do you do? <laughs> um, but that is just like, that is pen in hand. Uh, it doesn't count any of the time spent, uh, like gathering reference or um, on social media promoting or doing the writing or any of the other stuff that I do. Um, it's just the painting. So it can be, uh, it can be pretty tiring trying to keep up with that when everything else is like because it usually takes at least kind of five or six hours to actually get those three hours out uh, when you add everything into it um so yeah <laughs> it's very disciplined um how do you get yourself into the mood to like just get in the groove of it um I'm very um let's see I'm the kind of person that really likes succeeding at things I think mean, that's most people um if I feel like I'm doing well at something I will throw my whole self at it uh if I feel like I'm not doing so well at something um I will give up <laughs> um, so I I have to kind of get myself going straight away in the morning um if I allow myself to sit around and play around then I'll usually kind of get into that mindset of like oh you know it's getting kind of late and I've not started yet maybe it's just not the kind of day for me today um, so I have to, I start by taking like a, a small chunk of something. I'm like, right, I'm going to just going to start by doing this one 10 minute manageable task. Um, and then once I've done that, I'm kind of like, oh, well, you know, easy win. I'm like, I've hit the ground running and I kind of build up those small manageable tasks. And then it's almost addictive, I guess. The more I see those things coming together, the more I'm like, I'm just doing great. I'm just going to keep working. I'll blaze past the three hour mark. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I don't, I wouldn't say that I'm a particularly disciplined or inspired person. Um, I can definitely be pretty erratic and it's hard to get me to just really focus. But if I make it all about the time I'm putting in and not what's coming out of it, then then that's how I get my focus. That's how I find my discipline. It's all in that accountability and the, the physical writing down of the hours I'm doing. I feel ashamed if I put down, I'm like, oh, 
two and I'm like oh oh man so uh, yeah I kind of I have to trick myself into it when you see the small details of what you're doing in your case you're writing your hours you seeing it helps a lot yeah I got a actually on the wall over there I've got like a wall chart uh, it's like a blackboard type thing and I tally my hours down um I've set myself I set myself the goal of doing three hours of painting a day uh for a total of 18 hours a week so that roughly translates of six days of three hours of painting um and so if I have a bad day I'm not I'm not completely in trouble. I'm like, oh, I you know I only got one hour done today, but that's because this, this, and this. And I can make up that time over the other days. Um, so I like the feeling of flexibility, but accountability. Um, that if I don't get the 18 hours done, then we're like, okay, well, we need to sit down and talk about this. Um, but if I, you know, I'm trying to get my three hours done and trying to be consistent, but allow a little bit of flexibility on things. That's really good. Thanks. <laughs> It's funny. It's when you were talking about the quick little ten minute task to get your day started. Um, that's actually a military motto, where is they it? make the bed. First thing they do is make the bed, and it's because yeah. once you've accomplished that, you've accomplished the first task of the day. You can move on to the next task, kind of thing. Oh, interesting. So uh, it's funny you talk about that because it's actually been proven to be very successful. So did not know that. Oh my goodness! I never do my bed. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be your bed. That's just an analogy. It's yeah, yeah. it's conquering that first task of the day because then it leads yeah. you to the next task and the next task and so on and so forth. Do my bed. That is exactly <laughs> it. I get up and I'm like, a good day starts with I make the bed, I clean my teeth, and then I weigh myself. And like those three things are like <laughs> absolute gospel. Um, and then when I come downstairs, I'm like, I I do the dishwasher, and then the kitchen's clean and ready for the day. Um, and then I'm like, okay, now I can sit down and I can make some headway with my work. Um, and yeah. that ritual is, is so silly, but it's just a, it's kind of like a trigger for my brain that, okay, we're awake and we're doing this. Yeah. Um, and you can just bet that those days where I'm like, oh, I don't need to make the bed today. It's fine. And oh, I ate too much yesterday. I'm not going to weigh myself. Um, and then that's the day where it all goes to like wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is good. <laughs> No, I, I don't have the document in front of me, so I don't remember. Is the next thing? Fun the facts. Question? It oh. is. Anyone this is the hardest one for everyone, too. Can anyone warn you? I, I think I misread the show notes. I thought this was for somebody else. I thought this was you guys talking about that. So what are we? <laughs> so. <laughs> Every episode, we ask our guests if they can offer us give us a share a random fact anything they've learned anything they find either inspiring or interesting curious odd um see at, at one of my old jobs we had a bunch of artists in one giant room and every now and then someone would just spit out a random fact just something completely out of the blue like what? okay, I didn't know that about cheetahs or I didn't know that about penguins. It's like, okay, you know, you just learn stuff when you're All researching. Right. So you Give learn. me a few seconds to have a quick look at my art and see if there's anything I can think of. I'm sorry. I absolutely looked at the show notes and read that as you guys were answering that one. I was like, okay, yeah, cool. I don't need to answer that one. I was like, I'm glad I'm not getting that question. Here's the thing. Like, everyone overthinks it, but technically, yeah. Uh, it, you've technically told us some things already, like about Virginia and mountains and stuff, and you know yeah. your plants and your trees. It could be anything. Mm. Mm. Oh, this is really, really <laughs> this is so not interesting. It's the only thing I can think of that is in any way actually factual. I'm like, hey, uh, I learned about epiphytic ferns lately, um, which are the fun-looking ferns that grow off of other plants and trees. So that is, I'm sorry, that's the best you're going to get out of me. On no, that's great. Limited preparation. Um, but yeah, there's like these, uh, I think they look really cool. It's because of like jungle scenes and uh, foliage type scenes. Um, they're the kind of, the ones that kind of drip off of other plants and they just look really lovely, kind of cascading and uh, so they're epiphytic ferns. And I find that they're really good for making them. just the scene look more cluttered and kind of cozy. Um, but yeah, sorry, it's not as fun as I would have liked for it oh, to have been. But... That's totally <laughs> fun. That is 
very similar to the guest before you because he was also into plants. And okay. He was telling us about how vanilla actually comes yeah. from an orchid, which none of us knew. No, I don't know that. Yeah, or how it looks, looks, for that matter, how it really looked. So, I'm going to Google this. <laughs> yeah, we had to as well because it, it was one of those where it was so interesting, you almost don't want to believe them. You're like, are you sure it comes from an orchid? <laughs> Oh, also recently I learned that um, goats have square pupils. Oh, you know, that, I've seen that in cartoons, but I never actually bothered to look. I took it for granted. <laughs> do they really? They it's really horrifying. <laughs> Whoa. I was I'm looking so at baby goats and, uh, and I regretted it. I was not happy. <laughs> not okay. You're not as cute now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I didn't get what I was expecting. So you're I'm not going to do goat yoga? No. Use another random one then. Um, Goat yoga. Have you ever seen? You, have you ever seen the skull of an infant? Yes. Actually, I mean, it's morbid. I'm sorry. It's more because of my degree. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> All of your teeth. anyone in the medical field seen it a lot. Yeah. All of their teeth are hidden around all over their face. They're like yeah. hidden up, and it's like yeah, yeah, it's all over the cheeks, everywhere. It's just teeth, skull, and teeth. Oh, it is the freakiest thing. Yeah, it's yes. What you think of the Molded. alien chest poppers? Yeah, <laughs> didn't see that, and like <laughs> glad to say. Yeah, my wife's <laughs> pregnant right now, so I just constantly <gasps> let her know she's got a little parasite in there. Oh my gosh, it's like. <laughs> Husband duty. <laughs> like, you know what my says to me? He's like, you know, what's the point in having a wife if you can't torment her? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> loving and cherishing. <laughs> no, there's no fun in that. Torment. <laughs> that uh, is good. So should we? Uh, should we have her do the sixty second challenge? I hope so. You're gonna do it, right? Oh, she's ready. This is my worst nightmare. I hope you appreciate. I am, this is, as the girl who loves noodling tiny details and drawing foliage for 40 hours, you are giving me some kind of like aneurysm here. <laughs> I will do my best well, for you guys. <laughs> normally we take a suggestion from chat as far as the art subject. So if anyone in chat has anything they would like you to draw, please let us know. And there is a slight delay, so we'll give it. A second for people. I'm so scared. <laughs> oh, there's been some interesting ones. I don't know if you've heard uh, past episodes. We've had Spider Pig and uh, Zombie Anders. Dead Bob Ross. Oh, man. And uh, Gerbil Ninjas. Was it, was it Gerbil? Yes. Yeah. Gerbil so, chat's very creative. Yeah. Oh boy. I'm pretty nervous. I'm, I'm <laughs> not... I would not identify as a concept artist, so this is going to be fun. <laughs> Don't judge me on this 60 seconds, please. I swear there's more to me than this. It's funny. I actually tried it the other day because how this all came about is there's actually an artist who does 60 seconds and then five minutes and then 30 minutes and then an hour. And yeah. it shows like the rendition process and his 60 seconds are incredible. Nice. Um, so I was like, oh, I'm going to try this. I was terrible. It was... <laughs> yeah, see, it usually takes me at least five minutes to have a couple of good ideas. So, <laughs> yeah, I just drew a circle and I was like, there you go. Some sticks for legs. Yeah, we'll refine it a little bit. <laughs> Dr. Ozanov suggests her favorite snack. Mmm, yay. All right, so what am I doing? I'm doing a 60 second is mm -hmm. it a character that I'm doing snack? or just a drawing or. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of which? Like if, if you go with your snack, uh, what's your favorite snack? Ice cream. <laughs> so Rachel's favorite snack, she has to draw in 60 seconds. All right. Tell me when. All right. So I'm going to count down to three, and then I'll let you know when we're halfway and when you're down to 10 seconds. Okay. We can do this. All right. So three, <laughs> two, one, go. All right. Oh, oh no. Wait, no. I'm drawing in white. Oh, wait. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Should we restart? Yes. Should we give it a restart? <laughs> All right. It wouldn't let me change. Oh man. Technical difficulties. Bear with me. My pen nib was unscrewed. All right. I'm sorry. Throughout this, why does this not change it? Look, I want to confirm that this is not me making stuff up. I'm trying to change this. And it's not letting me go to black. Oh, no. Why are we going black? Oh, oh sorry, guys. 
All good. Reconnecting this. Maybe we'll do it on here. That's what Let's it do works it on for here. Me, yep. We're gonna do it on here. Ah. Ooh, the big boy. Oh, oh. Have you named it? I name all. I haven't. That's terrible. Oh my gosh, my poor baby. I neglect it so. <laughs> all right. It's so dapper. I know. I love this thing. All right. I'll let's load up the new file. And you can guys can see what I'm doing. You can see my shame. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a cool perspective. We've never seen it straight on before. Well, people yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> actually no Cobb. All right. Hang on. Let me make sure that everything is working. Turn my remote on. All right. Yeah, we really, we're really like working. All right. All right, Ruby, get the clock okay. ready. You ready? Sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. You're going to get some really advanced ice cream here, guys. I hope you're ready for this. We're going to see some fine artwork happening. <gasps> Three scoops. It is kind of rude at the moment. I swear it's not rude. Waffle right. cone? Yeah. What flavors are there? Three scoops, yeah. No, it's probably something boozy. <laughs> 30 seconds. This is a flake. Because <laughs> I feel like I need to inform you. Yeah, of course it is. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's the good stuff. All right, we're going to have it dripping a little bit because that just never, ever lasts. I am so excited about that. 10 seconds, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Pencils and down. <laughs> <The satchel>. <laughs> <laughs> Flavors are emotion. And this is why you got me on the show, for my fantastic, <laughs> profound art abilities. <laughs> oh, this is great. <gasps> that is awesome. That really takes me back to childhood. Oh, no. I was really hoping I could pan in, but my camera won't come with me. Maybe I'll just share my screen so you can just see it and all of it's easy. It's a glorious thing. Mm. <laughs> I like how it's like a see no ear, evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, face yeah, no evil. There you go. It's a genius. I'm, yeah, profound. <laughs> 100 what I was going for. It was nothing to do with my silly... Inability to draw an ice cream. <laughs> hmm, that doesn't seem to be the right screen. No? What oh, is? There you go. What brush is that you're using? Oh, it's one I made the other day. It's um, a pencil. I put it pencil brush. Um, I like it, it. Thanks. It's kind of, it's basically the hard round, but with a bit of grit in it. Yeah, so, I see um, that. So it's kind of, yeah, I like that. <laughs> Very nice. Um, but it just is really nice for like doing these kind of like, nice indecisive lines it can kind of be it's like sketching so yeah, yeah. it's got some nice variety to do it so, yeah so i think uh for all the americans you're gonna have to explain what a flake is oh is that not a thing that you got what i'm so sad i'm so sorry the whole of america <laughs> <laughs> we don't have flake chocolate oh man okay oh so what do you stick in your ice cream <laughs> m&ms oh fair do. um so it's like a Oh my gosh, it's like, imagine really, really, really thin sheets of chocolate. Yes. Kind of, um, if you were to drape really, really, really thin sheets of chocolate and make it into like a long tube, <laughs> this is a really bad explanation. Um, but it's like, I guess like really thin, airy chocolate that's kind of made into a tube. Tyler, help me out here. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're doing good. The name says a lot of it. It's flaky chocolate. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, oh, I just rubbed out my ice cream. That's so fun. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> um, um, but unfortunately, that is one that we don't get out here. Oh, it's so sad. There is, you know, there are more differences between England and America than I expected there to be. Um, those and also, and, uh, it's, it's like a one-way exchange as well. <laughs> Curly whirlies as well. I loved those as a kid. Yeah. They're wonderful. I have to go down. There's a place in Santa Monica that's like a all 
UK British store. Mm, what kind of stuff does it have? Just everything that we don't normally have. So like uh, birds custard, um, flakes, curly whirly, all the candies, um, teas, biscuits, all like I said, any kind of food you can think of, meat pies, um, which isn't necessarily an English thing, but the oh way the English do it is a little I, different. I still have a, a meat pie that I made from leftover Thanksgiving turkey <laughs> in the fridge. <laughs> there <you go>. <laughs> <laughs> Love a meat pie. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I do miss, like I, I think that we we can see a lot of American media and stuff in England. So we're pretty familiar with a lot of like American words and American food and pop culture. Um, and I'm shocked by how much I will just kind of drop something casually in conversation and people are like, <laughs> um, I've probably done it while I've been on stream. I've probably said a word that I forgot and it's non-translatable and it's just like, what is she saying? <laughs> That's good. I'm going to say goodbye to the ice now. Yep. <laughs> Actually, hold on. Before you do that, save it and oh. send it to us because we <gasps> are compiling all of them into a fun calendar one day. Oh man, you're gonna capture it. This is meant to be transient shame, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Poor chair. We're gonna put your name, your social links next to the image. <laughs> Every time I apply for a job, you're just gonna send that. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be the yeah. number one Google search ahead. <laughs> my, my crowning moment. Yeah. <laughs> But don't worry, it's, it's all for a good cause. It'll be going to St. Jude. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That was <laughs> Joe's idea. Unfortunately, that's it's awesome. not for tonight. It's, it's okay, Joe. Oh, I'll be warm next time. I'm not yeah. in darkness. <laughs> if Joe hears this, if you're going to edit it, we miss you. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to cut all that out. <laughs> It's going to be like, oh, I miss you guys. I'm in the snow. <laughs> what are they talking about? <laughs> All right. Well, um, this is where we kind of start wrapping up the show. So any tips, suggestions, um, words of wisdom for for artists out there? Um, I think that my advice is mostly in the form of um, kind of the – the mental approach to things uh, it can be really hard to feel like there is a million different ways of doing things right and you're not doing any of them um, it feels like there are so many options you can take but none of them are quite working for you uh, and it feels like everyone else has kind of figured everything out and everyone's doing something that you're not and you can't quite put your finger on it um, and I really do think that most of the people who are who you look up to are often just kind of in the same journey but further ahead they went through the same teething process of just not knowing what it was that made them tick of feeling like they weren't doing the right work or that they had no style um and then it's always kind of surprising when you look back and realize that, that people are looking up to you and going <laughs> you're like wait what <laughs> it's me what am I doing um and it it can be really intimidating <laughs> uh, it's a really intimidating journey because it's, it's not like most careers where you have a very clear um, progression through it. So much of it's subjective and uh, there's a lot of very strange kind of elusive ways to be successful and it's really intimidating um, but I really do think that just uh, persevering on, um, paying attention to what people are doing that you like, so not just kind of being like I wish I could be like so and so but being like, like what is it about so and so that I love their work. Why do I love it? What things about it could I, you know, do myself? That sort of thing. Uh, and then also not trying to squash your own voice in the process. Um, so trying to pay attention to the things that you just really love doing. Um, there's a lot of gold in that, and that tends to be where someone's style comes out. So yeah, I think it's it can be really intimidating. It's just such a, it's a <laughs> where a lot of careers are a ladder. I feel like art is a swamp, <laughs> but there is a way through it. We just have to keep going. <gasps> Yes, save that as a quote for later. <laughs> oh, <where> gosh. <laughs> <laughs> other careers have ladders. Artists have swamps. Oh, man. I love that. This is my brand of motivational inspiration quote. Art is a swamp. <laughs> 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 Enjoy. Here's a flashlight. Awesome. <laughs> well, where can people find you? Um, so I'm pretty much everywhere as I'm Rachel Bradley. 
So my website is imrachelbradley.com. I'm on Twitter and Instagram as I'm Rachel Bradley. Um, and you can also find me on YouTube a little bit. Uh, I'm part of Team Bradley on YouTube, uh, where I record videos with my husband. Um, and you can find my reference on reference.pictures. Awesome. All right. Well, that is our show for tonight. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, Rachel, for joining us and sledging through some of the technical difficulties. Uh, uh, it's been nothing but fun. Thank you for having really me, guys. All right. We will catch you guys next time. Pixels After Dark. Have a good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.